Hi, this is James with the Club Jade Blog here, and I am here with Drew Schreiber. And we are here at Comic Con, and we're going to talk about uh, his books here. We got, you know, Death Troopers and Red Harvest. So when you were asked, you know, you've written horror in the past, right? Right. And so, how, how are you approached for for Death Troopers? Well, Keith Clayton at, at Del Rey, who had edited my original horror novels, was also involved with the expanded universe Star Wars books, and it had been a conversation that they had had, I guess, at a bar at a convention, just how cool it would be to do a, a Star Wars zombie novel. And, uh, and, and they had just kind of bullshitted about it, and they finally kind of came to me and asked if I'd be interested in trying to write something like that. And I was ecstatic, I jumped at the chance, and uh, you know, wrote, wrote an outline for them, and sort of sent it in, and, and they hated it. So I, I tried again, and they came up with something that they actually liked, so we just kind of went from there. Um, and from that point on, it became a very intuitive process, um, just sort of channeling the voices of my, of my youth, you know, um, hearing characters who I had seen on the big screen in, in Star Wars films and loved, uh, and just really enjoyed putting them in a really terrifying zombie setting. Yeah, being on board The Purge definitely was a, a, a terrifying setting. Um, so was it your idea originally to, to have you know Han and Chewie as the secret characters that appear? It was, and actually the first draft of the outline that everybody hated was way more Han and Chewie. I basically wrote what every fan would have written, I think, the first time out, which was like Han and Chewie versus the zombies. And they sort of let me know in a very gentle way that like you can do this, but just know no one's going to be afraid that anything bad's going to happen to them. You know, we know at this point in the Star Wars continuum that they're going to go on and have lots of other adventures. So we're not really worried about the zombies attacking Han and Chewie and killing them. And it's like, of course you're right. You know, so that put the ball back in my court to come up with some original characters that were hopefully interesting enough to hold their own against some of the most beloved characters in the Star Wars universe. Um, and then it became, you know, Han and Chewie showing up sort of unexpectedly halfway through. And that was cool to do because you could sort of use them and bring them in, but you, you weren't dependent on them completely to carry your story. Yeah, definitely that, you know, it was a surprise. They're like, hey, there's Han and Chewie in here. Right. And they're like, holy cow. And it's like, they're going to get out, but you don't know who else is going to get out. And right. The, those final scenes, you know, when, when they're all banging on the shuttle, that, that was pretty tense. Yeah. It's my favorite part of every zombie movie. Well, I mean, there's two there's two aspects to it. There's the part where something's obviously wrong, but you haven't really trotted out the monster yet. That sense of empty foreboding and the quiet, like, expanse of the Star Destroyer that you're not sure what's out there. And then there's just the end where it's just everything must go. You know, your final cast is basically, you know, holed up inside some kind of a place that you're not sure who's going to survive. Yeah, and then when you went to Red Harvest, was it your idea to go back and look in the uh, Old Republic era? That's absolutely not my idea, actually. I really was sort of cast about for what to do, and Shelley Shapiro at Del Rey was just like, well, there's this whole, you know, sort of unexplored region of the Star Wars timeline, relatively unexplored, the Knights of the Old Republic era, she's like, you know, if you put it here, you'll really have the opportunity to take advantage of things you couldn't use in Death Troopers. You can have a Sith Academy, you can have Jedi, you can talk a lot about those things, and so really got to do that as a change of pace, which was great. Yeah, it was definitely interesting to see a lot of the Sith coming in and, and you know, Sith alchemy and then just even the power struggles within a, a, right. a school of Sith, essentially. It's like, yeah. how, how do they work together for you know a common goal where at the same time they're always trying to tear each other Very down? Selfish. And that was a real challenge, but it was also really rewarding because you got to write dark characters. You got to write, basically, you know, teen angst, effectively, like youth in revolt, but make it interesting enough that you're not just completely like black hat, white hat, you know, these are the bad guys, these are the good guys. Because I spent a lot of time with with the bad guys, and you don't want to just universally sort of paint them with that really wide brush. Yeah. So that was a, it was a rich and really great opportunity because the bad guys are always my favorite anyway. So. Well, that book was definitely filled with bad guys, but at the same time, you know, we we have our, our hero in. And how was your idea to, to come up with the, the orchid sort of almost like as a symbiote type thing? You know, that they're they're. This, shared connection. Yeah, it's weird. I think it came out of a conversation I had with Shelley and the whole notion of a Sith sort of agricultural core that you can work in. But it also sort of just kind of was stolen from the Rose in the Dark Tower series of Stephen King. There's a there's a flower in that. It's sort of people give me a lot of crap about the flower. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a talking flower. But at the same time, like I actually love the whole aspect. If you if you've read any of the Dark Tower books, the notion that there's a whole universe sort of contained within this within this Rose, this incredibly powerful life force. So I was like, I'm gonna take some of that. I don't steal from just anybody. I steal from everybody. And I, I stole from them. You, you, one of the coolest scenes, I think, from Red Harvest that I really liked was all of a sudden we have zombie tauntauns. I mean, 
That, that, that was genius. Tell us, tell us a little bit more Zombie about... Zombie Tauntauns were totally me playing with my Kenner toys from 1983. I mean, I had all that stuff, and I had the Zombie Tauntauns. Empire was my favorite of the, all the Star Wars films. You know, clearly, you know, I just... Red Harvest gave me the opportunity to set the action on a snowy planet, which was always one of my favorite <laughs> settings. And I was like, "There's no way I'm not having Tauntauns. If they make me take them out, I will. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna push. You're gonna the push hard for absolutely. And I, and I would love to see like the zombified Tauntaun action figure. I'm sure that they can be distressed and and, and allowed to be, have entrails hanging out instead of zombify a Tauntaun. Well, I, I think from yesterday's Hasbro panel, they are gonna make a new Luke Skywalker Tauntaun. So, so maybe you know, get your hands on one of those and, uh, and just come after with an acetylene torch and some body paint. That'd be, yeah. that'd be awesome. All right. Um, so, what, what's next for you? Uh, I have a couple of things coming out. I have uh, actually I've just finished working on a zombie high school football movie called Play Dead. It's an adaptation of a, somebody else's book, but I wrote the script for it. It's basically, Friday Night Lights meets Dawn of the Dead. Wow. Like a, a Texas high school football team gets infected and comes back and sort of takes over this town. So that's coming out, I think, next year. And then I have a novel called Au Revoir, Crazy European Chick, which is a young adult novel. It's coming out from Houghton Mifflin this fall. Okay. So a couple things in the pipeline. Well, very cool. Uh, anything else you want to share with the fans here at Comic-Con? No, just uh, psyched to be here. I haven't been to Comic-Con in a few years, and it's even better than I remember, so I'm having a great time. Just finished the signing with Eddie Dennis, who's one of the Death Troopers. He, he's one of the 501st that sort of zombified himself in his costume, and it's great to see him again. Just having a really yeah. good time. How was the signing today? It went really well. People are so, you know, they're just so gracious, and, and I forget how, how uh, basically, how civil these Comic-Cons are. For 130,000 people packed into a convention center, people have been unfailingly polite, and the people who've come up to me to sign my books have just been so, like, just so cool, and it's just, it's just great to see them. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you giving us the interview, and I hope you have a great rest of the my con. Pleasure. Thanks a lot.